Hey, what's up everybody? It is Timothy here with Jank Diver Gaming. Everybody ready to play some D&D? &D? Um, I'm not. I'm going to play the D&D &D magic set instead. Adventures in the Forgotten Realm is up on Arena a lot sooner than I thought it would be. I've done a couple drafts, but as is tradition for the channel, I'm going to do one of my first drafts and record it and kind of give my initial take on the format, probably go 03 and, uh, and just drop and do another draft. Um, I have done a total of two drafts. I have trophied once with a 7-1 red-white aggro deck, and I went 2-3 with a blue-black kind of rogues um, get you, like, deal combat damage deck. I'm not entirely sure how to describe that, but I'm going to give my thoughts on a lot of the cards. Uh, I'm going to be a little rusty. Obviously, I have not solved this format. I have not watched a lot of content on it or anything like that. But I figured it's always fun to kind of give an initial take on the format, and then when the format starts winding down, go ahead and look back on things and see, you know, how right or wrong I was about some of my card evaluations. So that's the name of the game. As always, remember you can subscribe to this channel for more content like this. Check out our podcast, me and Theo, one of our admin from the Jank Diver Game and Discord, recently did an episode on... Um, the, uh, just a cube set review of this entire set. We pulled out every card that we think is cube worthy from the set and we talked about it. It's a little bit of a long episode, but set reviews tend to be. So uh, check that out. We had a lot of fun making it and we'd love some feedback on it. But anyway, name of the game here is best of one up to seven wins or three losses, whichever one comes first. And uh, I don't expect to get everything right here because I have not played with a lot of these cards. I haven't seen a lot of these cards in action. So I'm going to be speculating a lot, but let's go ahead and jump into it. Hope everybody is having a good day today and hope we have a little bit of fun. Always uh, interested to learn the format from the very beginning. Um, so if I get like a wonky rare or something, there's a good chance I'll be trying it out. Uh, my initial take is that you want to be aggressive or assertive in some capacity. And uh, that means that aggro tends to be pretty good. Let's go and switch this over. So just off the bat, I, I have noticed there are a lot of cards that are individually very weak unless you're in specific archetypes. Like there's cards that care about die rolling that you would probably not play in any other archetype. Again, I want to try out rares. Uh, Paladin class is interesting. It is an anthem and that's probably good enough for limited. We didn't even talk about this one for cube because it's just a little bit too time consuming for, you know, the streamlined cube decks, but there's a lot of power in this card. The classes are interesting to me. In best of one, your opponents are less likely to have some enchantment removal. Um, there's also Magic Missile is probably the easy best card. This pack looks a little bit weak. Displacer Beast is probably pretty good. Power of Persuasion is probably playable, but you really only want it if you're in the um, die rolling deck, and Magic Missile is obviously very good, but let's try out Paladin class here. You can go ahead and pause on that one. So following up Paladin class, we have a couple pretty good uncommons. I think all of these uncommons are decent. There's the Ajani's Pride Mate that also scries whenever you gain life, and green-white is the life gain archetype. Unfortunately, uh, nothing about Paladin class gains life, so it's not like a direct card that we want to move into. Um, there's Death Priest of Miracle, which is... <clears throat> excuse me. It's a lot like the... Um, Liliana's Devotee, if you remember that card from Core 21, I believe it was, last year's core set. A couple middle-of-the-road black cards, a couple pretty poor green cards. Chaos Channeler is nice, and I do feel like Red-White's a good place to be. This card's also probably pretty good, but I don't know that I want to be a gold card. There is not a lot of fixing in the set. I might take this Death Priest here. Um, it seems like there's some pretty high upside. There's some good sacrifice synergies running around. There's a dungeon map here. Uh, Precipitous Drop is good. So it's an aura that gives minus two, minus two, just kills a small creature, and you venture into the dungeon when it enters the battlefield. If you've completed a dungeon, it gives minus five, minus five. The, the thing about Black White, Black White in particular is, um, uh, an archetype that cares about completing dungeons. Obviously, Venturing into the dungeon is usually pretty good, but you have cards like this Gloomstalker here that get double strike when you've actually completed a dungeon. Um, and from what I can tell, completing a dungeon is a little harder than it seems. I think this card's pretty good, and I believe this is only if a creature died. 
Yeah, I'm probably going to take Precipitous Drop here. Trickster's Talisman is interesting. Plus one, plus one. If it deals combat damage, you can sacrifice the equipment to copy the creature that it's on. I'm hoping to get back one of these white cards, but I'm going to go ahead and take the Precipitous Drop. We'll see if the dungeon stuff is open for us. Okay, so Iron Golem, this has to attack or block, but it's a 5-3 for 4. There's a die rolling card here. Again, really hard to get into, I think, unless you specifically open one of the payoff cards. There's a Huan T Fang Blade, which uh, is geared between somewhere between Black White and Blue Black. Blue Black is an archetype that cares about your creatures getting in for combat damage for um, some sort of specific ability. This one seems pretty good. Vampire Spawn seems like possibly a man without a home. There's also Arborea Pegasus, which is a good aggressive card. Not seeing too much else here. I'm going to go ahead and take the Juan T Fang Blade. It's another card that can venture. Um, it's kind of a must block sometimes, so it works with the Death Priest of Miracle. Seems like an okay attacker. Following that up, so a lot of blue, black, and white here. Notably, no red in the pack, so we'll probably try to stay out of red. There's a Lightfoot Rogue. This is a 2-1 that can sometimes gain Death Touch when it attacks and sometimes pump its power. Almost always going to attack is just like a 2-1 Death Toucher with occasionally an extra point of power. There's Fly. Um, I'm interested to try this card. It, whenever the enchanted creature deals damage to a player you ventured into the dungeon, I might just take this Lightfoot Rogue. It seems like if I don't end up in specifically black-white, that this is probably the best pick for me, although it looks like blue is quite open here. These cards are also quite good, but they're more suited for red-black, where you're going to have more treasures. Flump. Flump is probably a better card than people are going to give it credit for. Herald of Hadar, the only black card in the pack. This one's, I think, fine, but probably not super exciting. You see a guard approach is probably okay as well, since a lot of the removal is clunky and expensive. Choose your weapon. Double target creature's power and toughness, or deals five damage to a flyer. Another iron golem here. Find the path could be okay. We don't really need to ramp towards anything. It does venture into the dungeon, though. Might take the flump here, although it's not a particularly aggressive card. It's also a 3-1 for two. That might be what I want for this style of deck. Again, I have kind of value aggro. Ooh, Cloyster Gargoyle is a nice one. Also, Fate's Reversal, I think, is probably a pretty good card. There's another die rolling uh, payoff here, which is a pretty good card, but you have to be rolling dice. Um, I'm going to take the Cloyster Gargoyle. It's not a particularly aggressive card, but right now I have two ways to venture into the dungeon. This is a third, and if we're shaping up to be black-white, we're hoping to get rewarded with like the black-white uncommon, which... Pays us off for completing dungeons. Yeah, let's go and take this Gargoyle. It strikes me as a good card. We'll want cards like Fate's Reversal. Maybe this is a little counterintuitive with some of the aggro stuff I've taken. There's a Gretchen Titch Willow. You're ambushed on the rogue. Road can bounce one of your own creatures or give plus one plus three. That's a perfectly fine combat trick. This needs treasures to be playable. Otherwise, it's just a two mana two two. And then there's a Sepulchral Ghoul, which can sacrifice creatures. Um, to get plus two plus two but only once per turn boots of speed is also quite good i'm gonna take one of the black or white cards gretchen's off the table you come to a rivers off the table i guess i'll go ahead and take the ghoul maybe we get some sort of sacrifice synergies there devour intellect makes your opponent discard a card again you need treasure to make this really good power of persuasion either bounces a creature or if you high roll on it that creature goes away for a little while I guess I can take Half Elf Monk. This doesn't seem like a particularly strong card. Devour Intellect also just doesn't seem that good. I don't have any treasure making or anything like that. Um, I'm not excited about this Half Elf Monk. Okay, I'll take a Shambling Gas, though. There's also you hear something on Watch. Deal 5 damage to an attacker or all your creatures get plus 1, plus 1. The Shambling Gas isn't super exciting it's okay with a sacrifice outlet like the um sepulchral ghoul i'll go ahead and take it I i'm not sure about that okay we've got a gloom stalker there's also feign death if a creature dies it comes back with a plus one plus one counter i believe tapped yeah these cards always 
in my estimation, perform better than they seem like they should. I'm going to take Gloomstalker, though, and we'll hope to just get a lot of ways to... Oh, shoot, I guess I'm not taking Gloomstalker. Yep, sorry, had to mute myself there for a second. Hired Hexblade. You find the villain's lair is pretty good. You see a guard approach as well. Um, okay. Now, like, we could drop white here. Half-Elf Monk's not that good. Gargoyle, Paladin class, I think are going to be good. But we could drop white for a good card. There is Grazalax here, which strikes me as a good card. I don't have a lot of blue. You see a guard approach isn't great, but blue was flowing in pack one. There's You see a pair of goblins, which is a great card. Evolving Wilds is always nice. I had the Beholder, clunky removal, but I found that you probably want to pick up one of these just to be able to deal with the dragons if you can't get some of the other removal. There's also Rally Maneuver, which uh, gives a creature plus two plus O oh in first strike and then can give another creature plus O oh plus two. I mean, Grazalex... I think is good and I do think blue is going to be open but I think given the black and white that I have already I might just take rally maneuver here and be happy with it owlbear is a good card I have a shock and grasp and you see a guard approach and there's a monk class I don't even fully remember what this does your second spell costs one less you can return a non-land permanent to its hand on level two Oh, that's actually really good. There is Skullport Merchant, which is also quite good. There's Thieves Tools, Red Dragon. This this pack's pretty good. Monk class is a nice one. Um, doesn't really fit with what we want to be doing. Nothing here that ventures. I'm going to take Skullport Merchant. I played with this card once, and I found it to be a pretty solid just um, sacrifice outlet. A good blocker. This is basically Sailor of Means, but it's bought you a sacrifice ability and a cheaply costed sacrifice ability we're gonna need more removal here i'm not excited about this vampire spawn either removal and combat tricks i think are the name of the game i wonder if thieves tool yeah thieves tool is probably pretty good in this deck as well another rally maneuver there's a minimus containment these two black cards are good i do want fate's reversal for this style of deck um cards like these death touchers are going to get traded off with quite often. Where is it? Where are you? There you are. The one t Fang Blade. Your opponent's incentivized to block this and trade off when you can. And cards like Fate's Reversal, given that back, seems pretty good. I'm just going to take the Minimus Containment, though. This is a pacifism. It turns your opponent's creature into a treasure. And one thing I like about that is your opponent can't sacrifice that to cards like Sepulchral Ghoul because they're no longer a creature. It's just solid removal. Cleric class, this has a lot of life gain stuff going on. Probably not for me. I'm going to take another Precipitous Drop, although I think Arborea, Arborea Pegasus would be quite good. Um, this card was also quite good. Someone played it against me, but Precipitous Drop seems like what I want here. Looks like my deck might struggle with getting rid of big creatures, though, which is going to be a problem. Cleric class, I don't think I'm gaining nearly enough life, if any at all, to make that worth the time and energy. Prosperous Innkeeper. There's a 2 2 lifelink here. Spare Dagger is probably worse than Delver's Torch. 50 feet of rope, I don't think is going to be that good. I'm probably just going to take the Delver's Torch. It gives a, a minor bump to a creature. I already have something that cares about being equipped, so I'd like to pick up one or two, like, okay equipment, and then it gives you venture, or it lets you venture whenever you attack. So I'm going to pick that up. I found the equipment to be decent. I'd I think this deck would like 2 mana 2-2 two, two lifelinker. There's improvised weaponry, which uh, is a sorcery apparently. We found that out the hard way. I don't know why we assume that cards are going to be instants. Um, two options here. I'm not into the spiked pick trap. There is a devoted paladin, which could be a nice top end creature. We don't have any 5 drops yet. We could pick one up. And again, I do think you hear something on watch as a card I would be interested in. But I'm going to go ahead and take the 5 drop curve topper. Dragon's Disciple, you really need dragons in your deck for this to be good. There's Celestial Unicorn for the life gain deck. Deadly Dispute is probably a good card that I would like to pick one up, but I'm going to take the Ranger's Hawk here and have just another creature that can hold equipment or get a plus one counter or so on and so forth. It can also venture. Um, I had two of these in my red-white aggro deck, and I was just attacking, so I didn't really take the time to venture, but 
seems fine. Did I take a spiked pit trap here? This can create a treasure token. I'm not going to play a second half elf monk. Maybe I take a devour intellect. I'm not super excited about any of these. I like the bounce spell, but we're not playing blue, obviously. I don't think I'm making enough treasure to really warrant the Devour Intellect, so I'll take this uh, Spike Trap and probably not look to play it. I will take one Eye of the Beholder here. And yeah, I'm going to be a low-curve aggro deck, but I'm going to have a couple ways to make treasure that can potentially ramp. This can get rid of... I mean, this is a six-mana destroy target creature for all intents and purposes. Feign Death is probably okay. I don't think we're going to complete dungeons often enough right now to warrant Gloomstalker. Wow, Monk Class Wield. Hmm. You know, I want to take rares <laughs> for the Vault right now because the set just started, but I'm going to take 2 mana 2 2 Lifelink. My deck wants 2 mana 2 2. There's a Gloomstalker. There's also a Paladin Shield, but this isn't a particularly good equipment. Oh, also Fate's Reversal. I'll go ahead and take the Fate's Reversal here. I think I'm going to be okay on cards like Gloomstalker if I need them. Arborea Pegasus on the wheel is a nice one too. And a Spare Dagger that we're probably not going to end up playing. Vampire Spawn as well. Ooh, Loyal Warhound is a nice one. It's going to be my pick. It's a 3-1 Vigilance for 2, and it has the Knight of the White Orchid ability. If your opponent has more lands than you, you get to just free roll uh, planes. There's also this 5-3 for 2, which I am have a little asterisk next to, because this card is either busted or not very good at all, and I'm not sure which of those two it is. I'm leaning towards, in a deck like this, potentially being very strong your opponent needs to trade off for your creatures sometimes you can sacrifice your own creatures and you just get spotted at two mana five three it also has flash so you can just trade off in combat on an opponent's turn or if they use sorcery speed removal you punish but let's take uh the good boy here a couple more ways to venture is what i'm looking for here divine smite is one of the color hosers that i'm not super excited about it, it can exile a black permanent, which is nice, but if that permanent's not black, it just phases it out for a turn, so it's not very good. Zombie Ogre, on your end step, you venture of a creature died this turn. That seems like it's going to be my pick and probably a better 5-drop for us than Herald of Hadar. I don't think I want multiple Eyes of the Beholders, and I'm going to get this Gloom Stalker back, so I'll go ahead and take Zombie Ogre. If this was best of three, I would probably take the white color hoser, but this is best of one, so... I don't really want to do all that sphere of annihilation huh there's also drider drider's pretty strong um this is a three four 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 that ventures when it enters the battlefield drider is a four three that makes a two one menace when it deals combat damage to a player really good with any way to give it evasion this is a two one for two with not a lot of text i wonder if sphere of annihilation's good it's kind of a board wipe you have to invest a lot of mana into but it doesn't go off until the turn after. This is probably not a deck that wants to play, especially if I'm playing things like Minimus Containment. I'm just gonna... I guess this doesn't hit enchantments, huh? Might just take Drider here. I'm not sure about Sphere. Maybe Sphere is just, like, really good. But Drider's also probably really good. Uh, we have a Hired Robber. When it gets in, you make a treasure. And we also have another Huan T Fang Blade. I think that's going to be my pick here. I would like to pick up another combat trick or two to get these creatures in. Probably not playing these vampire spawns. They're just like zero synergy cards. I'll take one T. Maybe Horde Robber's where I want to be. Probably not, though. I don't care too much about the treasure. Another Skullport Merchant's nice. There's also Evolve in Wilds. Planar Ally as a top-end flyer that ventures when it attacks. Right now, I already I have five three drops and a six drop. I don't really want to pick up another one. Guess I'll take the Skullport Merchant. It's a good card. It's a very good card. I mean, this one can venture, but I don't need to go all in on that, I don't think. Let's go ahead and take Skullport. Uh, Manticore seems okay. There's a Hired Hexblade. This Eccentric Apprentice would be really good, but we can't really play it. Leather Armor as well, which seems like an okay card, but we don't really care about equipping our creatures too much, so we don't want to load up on a lot of equipment. Like, I'm not playing Spare Dagger. Guess I'll take the Manticore. Manticore lets me just freely attack, like, small creatures into big creatures and maybe get some value off of that. Uh, fine pack for us here. 
Do I want a deadly dispute? Or do I want just another Lightfoot Rogue? Probably just the Rogue. Just keep attacking with Death Touch creatures, right? And that's the name of the game here. And we are... Oh, wow, Skeletal Swarmin. This card is excellent. Is there a way for me to play that? I do have a couple Treasure Makers. Um, otherwise, we'd be taking a Shamblin' Ghast. Hey, I'll let you read this card because it's extremely confusing. But in a deck like mine where creatures are going to be dying, it seems like it has some merit. Potion of Healing doesn't do what we want in this deck. And this card's good. There's a couple of these going around. I'm just going to take a Uncommon for the Vault. I'm not playing any of these cards. All right, we got the Gloomstalker back. There's another Eyes if we want it. I'll take Gloomy. Two mana, two one with virtually no abilities, or two mana, two one with redundant abilities. I wish this thing had some sort of keyword, like give me something. All right, and then rest of the pack, not super likely to matter. Would have been nice to pick up an Evolving Wild, obviously, for this uh, skeleton thing, but let's we'll see what our treasure situation's like here in just a second. Because I'm going to be probably playing that off treasure if I play it at all. I don't think I want a vanilla 2-1. I don't have enough treasure to make that worthwhile. And a vampire spawn. Okay. Well, let's see what we got. We're looking at 47 cards here. I don't necessarily have to play the gold 5 drop. It is pretty good. Also have the death priest to go with it, which is nice. I am not excited about this half-elf monk maybe maybe i'm underrating it but it just doesn't strike me as very good maybe it is good i don't know let me just do an initial take of things that i'm not super excited about so paladin class is actually realistically like a four drop of sorts the first mode just makes it harder for your opponent to interact on your turn I don't think I'm cutting the twos. Maybe Sepulchral Ghoul, because I don't really want to be sacrificing my creatures here, and I have the Skullport Merchants. Minimus Containment. The three drops are fine, with Gloomstalker being the worst, because I'm not going to complete a dungeon every single time. Half-Elf Monk is just okay. This pumps Skeletons, Vampires, and Zombies. Do I have any of those, like, actually floating around? Not really. <laughs> These are cards on the chopping block. The Skeletal Swarm, and we don't have to necessarily uh, push our deck for. So if I cut this, I don't want to go down to 16 lands here unless I'm cutting some of the top end. Feels like I should cut one of the 5 drops though, but maybe not. Maybe that's not true. Don't have a lot of removal. Alright, maybe we pause here and I'll come back and tell you what I've got as a final build. So we'll be right back.
Okay, this is what we came up with. So I wanted to drop down to 16 lanes. I cut the eye of the beholder. Um, since it's a six drop, I cut one of the five drops, the drider. Maybe that's incorrect, but the zombie ogre, if I'm going to be playing like Coyster Gargoyle and things, I think I want the zombie ogre in the deck. Drider is probably better than zombie ogre. Um, so that could be wrong, but I counted nine ways to venture. So it seems like it is feasible to complete a dungeon, especially if we go for the Tomb of Annihilation. But... Um, yeah, this is the deck that we came up with here. We'll see how it does. It's a little light on removal, but it does have some three drop ways to get a creature out of the way. Um, it's got a couple death touchers on attack, so our opponent's going to need to be blocking a fair amount of the time. Um, we're going to be pretty bad on defense, though, is the only problem. So we'll see how it all pans out here. Again, uh, let me know what you think. Should I be playing Drider? Should I be playing the six drop? Should I be making skeletal swarming work, even though I only have a couple ways to make treasure? Let me know what you would do. Again, I'm not super experienced. I'm sure a month down the line, I'll know exactly what I should and should not be playing. But with all that being said, this is the deck that we're going to be playing. Again, uh, Drider is interesting to me. It, it seems like it might be better than both of these. Like, if it ever gets in, it's really good with the Manticore as well. It's good with any sort of removal anyway we're second guessing ourselves this is what we uh <laughs> decided to play let's go ahead and try this out if i'm not satisfied with how the four or five drops are playing we'll go ahead and swap things out so thanks for joining my name's timothy with jank diver gaming let's see how it does see you all in match number one all right here we are for match number one against Waki. uh we've got an okay hand not really doing anything till turn four but we could draw a three drop to kind of smooth things over this is a hand that needs to draw at least one more land preferably a swamp plus some middle action so it's not a perfect hand but if we're against an aggro deck shambling gas can help us uh pave the way there fate's reversal is a fine card as well opponent's taking a mulligan um this so Tomb of Annihilation seems like if we're at an aggro start, this is the one we're going to want to go for. Because once you start a dungeon, you can't change the dungeon you're in. You're kind of stuck where you're at. And there's like a... Th this is the quote-unquote aggro dungeon. This is the control dungeon, and this is the one that you pretty much pick if you don't have a game plan, it seems like. Because <laughs> um, you at least get a token on the second one we did draw another land so if i could draw no more lands ever again that'd be nice uh this is up to one as well so you could just cast it to venture if nothing else we're not going to do that green white oh this is a lair of the hydra so you can pay um you can dump mana into it to turn it into an xx creature it's pretty good and a one two basilisk well there's the swamp uh i'm just going to hold back on defense here or I could trade one for one. If my opponent blocks these things trade, and I do have the Fate's Reversal. Um, yeah, I'd probably get in damage here, right? Opponent's not going to block. Next turn, probably play the Pegasus. I don't necessarily want to play the Priest on turn four, although it does pump the Shambling Ghast. I would like to play this on a turn where I can obviously get value from it immediately, which would be turn 5 if a creature died. If I play it on turn 4, it's exposed, but this seems like a good enough engine of sorts that I don't necessarily want to just throw creatures into it. This kind of blends in with the other forests. I could see totally just running into this <laughs> um, and not realizing that this was a creature or a manland, if you will. Hello there. All right, opponent's keeping up some mana. Don't know enough about flash threats here. I'm going to go ahead and play Pegasus and just get in an extra point of damage here. Opponent's got some sort of instant speed interaction. I guess they could just activate the lair, although there's they would never do that here. Trade my Shamblin Ghast for their, uh, <laughs> for their land. I'd be okay with that. Might be some sort of plummet type effect could be actual plummet which i believe is in this set the basilisk is a death toucher and there is a rabid bite variant for three mana in this set so if they have that this is that's just going to be murder as long as this basilisk is on board next turn i uh, will probably jam whatever i have into them and then hope that i can resolve this and then end turn 
make a skeleton like if the shambling gas trades off or just dies that's probably okay of course it has to happen on my turn this only triggers on my end step it also pumps the gas so we'll see what the opponent wants to do here basilisk coming in except And we have a Monk of the Open Hand, which gets a counter whenever you cast your second spell. And we have a 2-3 that, when it attacks, you roll a die and gain some amount of life. Usually 1-2. to two. Okay. Very nice, very nice. So, here, if I attack with the Shamble and Ghast, they block with the 2-3. I don't get to kill anything. I could play the Death Priest first. Makes my attack a lot better, which is what I'm going to do here. And then, obviously, I'll be tapped out if they go for it. I could also play Juan T, but let's see if opponent wants to do something about Ghast. Probably not, given that they know I can make a skeleton on end step if this Ghast trades off. I'm getting four damage this way otherwise. The Fate's Reversal makes me feel a little bit safer about them potentially just like killing a blocker like i might trade off for the basilisk here maybe not monk of the open hands a little scary double spell and start turning this into a giant creature i might have to keep shamble and gassed back on defense this seems annoying as well Three cards in hand from opponent as well. Are they going to get in with the Hydra here? They could totally do that. Turn this into a 4-4. Four, four. I guess a 3-3, three, three, right? Yeah, green, 3. You can't tap this, obviously. I mean, they could also just kill Priest and attack. They attack with Monk of the Open Hand. I might not block, though. Oh, they don't want to trade for the Death Touch. That's interesting. So gain two life on attacks. It says Vigilance. It has Vigilance. There's a lot of text on this card. It's easy to pass that up. There's also some really weird art going on. We're learning the cards, though. We're learning things. We don't know everything as much as I want to. Snake Rogue. Precipitous Drop's a nice one. So... I can go Precipitous Drop plus Juan T Fang Blade. Go to combat first with these two. Get back here. Get back here, please. All right, what you got, opponent? Does this have reach or anything? Probably should have checked that first. Okay. Okay, okay. Well, I'm going to attempt to give that minus one, minus one. Ooh. They jumped back over there. Looks like they might pump it or something to keep it around. Or is there an instant way instant speed way to kill my death priest no they would have done that okay oh sure okay so that's fine i think that's not that big of a deal their creatures get plus one plus one until end of turn that means i'm going to hold on to my precipitous drop though because i want to make the skeleton here so i'm just going to play one t fang blade maybe it's worth killing this while i can before it gets too much bigger. Now I'm going to go ahead and play the Fang Blade. And then I'll go to end step and make a token. I could also go ahead and get something back now. But I think I have higher quality targets than a Shamblin Gas that I could get back. So let's play this. Let's go to end step. Make a 1-1. One, one. Or rather it's going to be a 2-2. Two, two. Two, two Skeleton. All right, 
off to the races. So now those skeletons can kind of just attack freely along with whatever else is attacking. They're going to have to block this, I think. They might trade off their Death Toucher for my Death Toucher. They don't want me venturing for free. It looks like they might also just have a kill spell. That's fine. White has the enchantment. Doesn't have too much else. They attack with the shepherd here. Gain some life. And gain one life. And do I just trade off now? This has vigilance, right? So it's going to block just as well as it attacks. I'll go ahead and force the trade here. Make that happen because I can get it back gonna happen on defense anyway I guess they would probably kill this first but seven six that gains three life when it enters the battlefield and that's a card that's also a card hmm well this doesn't have trample or anything so it's not too big of a deal we could get an extra point of damage here I could just get back my death toucher 7-6 is a big boy. Although if they attack with this and then next turn I kill this, I, I wouldn't block this, I don't think. I'm just going to play the 4-4. Four, four. This doesn't give your creatures... Oh, it does give your creatures Vigilance. I'm going to attack with this Skeleton and see if they just take the bait or not. Because if it dies, I just replace it with another Skeleton anyway. It has Vigilance. There's no real downside to doing this. Alright, they're, <laughs> they're, they're not taking the bait. That's fine. We'll go ahead and replace it with a different creature anyway. That is okay. So the thing is, if they attack with this 7-6 now, then I can precipitous drop this and give myself a really good attack with the creatures I have left on board. Pointer ally is pretty good. It is pretty good. When it attacks, you venture. Okay. I could also attack with the 4-4. Four, four. They would just trade for the 1-2. So this is if a creature died. So I guess what I want to do here is just precipitous drop. Like maybe the problem is the three three won't die. The adventure when it attacks. It's a little rough. Kill the death toucher. Venture. Play this venture. Get the death toucher back. But not enough black mana to do to everything this turn. Could also just go for this. Get the death toucher, and that could be my turn. That would probably be okay as well. Ooh, some sultry noises in the background. I feel like we want to go for this one, right? And just try to drain them out a little bit. Each player loses a life here. We're going to play out our hand, right? Because this is uh, going to make us discard a card. All right, well, I guess we get a choice. Let's go and play our Death Toucher. And let's ship. Same attack. I mean, I'm fairly happy if they just take two here. Alright, um, they are going to get this planar ally going. It's a little problematic. This is probably not getting in there, but it is going to trade for something. If it does get in there, I can just yet, but we don't really want to ooble yet. It's just it's non-symmetrical, so you just go down a bunch of resources. I I can afford to lose a land, sacrifice a creature. I don't have an artifact, so that doesn't hurt me, and discarding a card wouldn't hurt me if I can play out my hand. But these are symmetrical effects that hit my opponent as well. 
All right, planar allies coming in. They're going to venture. Let's see which one they go for. Got to watch out for this stupid land as well. Oh, they're choosing. I'm probably not going for this one. Might go for this one. Oh no, they went for... They went for Dungeon of the Mad Mage. So they're not going to get too much right away. The next one, Scry 1, which isn't too big of a deal. Hopefully they don't play another flyer here and I can chip in with this Arb... Borea Pegasus. Okay. So this ventures on your end step if a land entered the battlefield, which did not. This is not particularly good. Uh, I should probably kill this at that point then, right? Just to make sure they can't venture anymore with it. Could also attack with this first. They're going to trade here. Here. If I get this 4 6 out of the way, I might have better attacks. Or the 7 6, rather. Let's just get the creature that can venture out of the way. So we're going to go. Each player loses two unless they discard a card. I will decline to discard. Opponent will probably also decline to discard. We'll go to combat and send in these two. I guess, well, no, I actually don't want to send in the skeleton because the one T is going to trade for something and I'm going to make another skeleton. I would just be down a skeleton if I did that. I don't think there's any way they don't block here. Yeah, it might be better to block with the Monk now that I think about it. This 1-2 just has a little bit of extra value. We'll play that, we'll make a Skelly, and we'll pass the turn. Opponent's going to attack and scry 1 with their Planar Ally. This is a tight game. I do need something to push me over the top here. Cloister Gargoyle would be an okay blocker. I might be at the point where I can just jam all in here if they attack with too many creatures. But they always have one additional blocker here. And if I attack all in and fail to kill them, they're probably going to kill me on the swing back. So we shall see this box. I guess this box here, this box here, two, four, six, eight. Not enough. The torch would be okay. When the equipped creature attacks you venture, that would get me there. Each player loses two life unless they sacrifice creature, artifact, or land. We can just afford to sack lands on that one. All right, they're going to scry one, so not too big. Next turn, target creature can't attack you or create a treasure token. That's also not the biggest thing in the world. One top. Don't like that. How? Take my three. Skullport Merchant is very good here. Yeah, Skullport Merchant is excellent. So I can actually attack with both of the skeletons, right? Could probably, well, they have the lair. All right, let's get in with the hot, I think just the Pegasus. If I attack with both the skeletons, they activate the lair, they block both of them, and I just lose those. So let's attack here, just get in my two, play the Skullport Merchant, and then sack a skeleton on end step, replace it with a skeleton. That seems pretty strong, gets me some cards here. Oh, they got a kill spell. Five damage target attacking creature, all right. Well, obviously I wish I had played the Skullport first, which I probably should have anyway. And here, I do not necessarily have to activate this right away. Um, I'm going to make a skeleton on end step. 
They scry to the top, so they're drawing something castable, something good. I'm choked on black mana a little bit. But I am getting to a point where I might be able to push through for lethal. The combat trick that gives first strike to one creature and lifelink to another would be excellent here. I think on end step I'm going to sacrifice a skeleton to draw a card. Blink dog. They kept that on top, huh? I guess this blocks pretty well. It's not super strong. So four mana you can phase this out. And the, the joke is that you can let it deal first strike damage with double strike, and then you can blink it out before it deals double strike damage or gets hit back. It's very expensive to do that. Planar ally coming in. They're going to stop a creature from attacking or make a treasure. I mean, they're going to stop a creature from attacking. They do have to do math here. One, two, three, four blockers. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. They're probably going to stop a creature from being able to attack, though. My Devoted Paladin, I assume. And what's after that? Scry 2? Okay. Yeah, Devoted Paladin can't attack next turn. I am very close to dying to this uh, Planar Ally, though. Alright, should we sack the Paladin since it can't attack anyway? Still doesn't get through this? Or should we just sacrifice a Skeleton? I kind of want to sack the Paladin. <laughs> I know that sounds weird, but it can't attack, and this is the type of turn that I'm going to need anyway, and it's just going to get blocked by whatever, so why don't we sack a creature that can't attack, and maybe we draw into something that lets us push in a big attack here. Loyal Warhound. Two, four, six. Not quite going to do it. That also doesn't quite do it. Um, so the Skeleton Army is probably coming in here. One gets eaten they can make this a 2-2. One of them gets through. One of them 100% gets through. One of them dies, but none of the others die unless they sacrifice the lair. And I can sacrifice whichever one gets blocked here, so... They could go Blink Dog in front of one and phase that out, and then the Giant Hedge Gorger in front of another... Going to keep the swamp in hand for the, uh... Oh, I like that the Basilisk, Basilisk is trading. Let's let First Strike happen and see if they want to use Blink Dog. They do. Okay, so now we'll go ahead and sacrifice this one. Draw a card. We drew a swamp, thank you. Um, let's let damage happen? Yeah, we want the Basilisk to die. So we're going to play the Warhound. I'm going to play one Swamp. I'm going to go to end step and make a token. And we'll see. We didn't get in any damage there. The Planar Alley is going to attack and scry too. Oh, that's lethal, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Jeez. All right, well, we have to draw into something here. Yeah, it was a hard-fought game, but we didn't quite get there, unfortunately. We drew a Cloister Gargoyle. All right, GG, my opponent. We are dead. I'll save them the trouble of clicking on the adventure. That was a close game. It was a very close game. I, I definitely drew exceptionally more lands than my opponent and they drew just a few more spells and a few more relevant things probably misplayed i could have drawn an additional card off this skullport merchant at one point um there was it felt like there was an avenue to win that game but it felt like that avenue might have involved drawing maybe one more relevant spell that game and anyway we're gonna take a loss for our first game but uh deck seemed fun let's go ahead and run it back for game number two all right, welcome back for game number two. Paladin class is here. That would have been extremely relevant last game, and we get to start off with it, maybe upgrade it on turn three. We'll see if we need to use the precipitous drop. 
Um, class, or level 3, whenever you attack until end of turn, target attacking creature gets plus 1, plus 1 for each attacking creature and gains double strike. Evolve in Wilds to start things off for the opponent. This hand's not bad. It needs to draw a little bit. Oh, that's... I'm just going to play that. I would need to skip a land drop to get value off of it, although it guarantees a... Hmm... I'm just going to play my 3-1 Vigilance. Yeah. Okay. Give up on the value. I'm not skipping a land drop to get a land drop off of this. We're not. We're not. We're not about that life. So if they play a blocker here, we'll see what the blocker is. If they don't play a blocker, I'll just level this up. Dancing Sword is not a blocker. This has to be equipped to something. So we get a pretty easy level up here an attack for four this is a good card so it gives a equipped creature plus two plus one and when the equipped creature dies you can turn the dance and sword itself into a two one flyer uh yeah two three room abilities trigger an additional time can't quite kill that but i can jump this thing into the air and attack for five dance and sword doesn't get flying or anything 2-3, your rooms trigger an additional time. Another Evolving Wilds. Next turn, I can level up Paladin class. For each other attacking creature. End gains double strike? What in the world? I didn't realize it did that. So we could attack for 8 in the air, potentially, with this Arborea Pegasus. It's kind of wild. I guess we would. Oh, they're... <laughs> okay, sure. That's fine, too. Like, they're taking a lot less damage this way, but that's okay. Um, I guess we attack with everything. They're probably incentivized to trade their 2-3 for the 3-1 here, and I can play the Zombie Ogre and get a trigger on end step, start venturing. That seems about as good as anything. make them trade off this Hama here before they can get any value off of it. And then I guess we still probably just want to go for Tomb of Annihilation, right? Um, each player loses a life and then start taxing them a little bit. Yeah. Put them down to eight. I feel like if I can get this Precipitous Drop to kill a creature, then we're looking pretty good. Worth noting, I also have a Minimus Containment in my deck. Ooh, Mana Core is very nice here. So I'm just going to attack. They're probably going to have to block, and then I can Mana Core off their 1-4 for no, uh, no cost. That was an excellent draw. Kill that off, and then on the instep, trigger Zombie Ogre. Yeah. Okay. Well, we got there against a slow deck. We drew particularly well, I would say. The precipitous drops are looking a little awkward. <laughs> They're not actually killing things, but we're also not playing against like hyper aggressive decks or anything like that. I'll take my first win though to make up for that first match a lot quicker too. Let's go ahead and jump into game three. I'll see you there. All right, match number three against Syntonic. Perfectly good aggressive hand here. Unfortunately, don't have a planes, but I'm still going to keep on the draw on the account that I can cast these, and if I draw another swamp, I have a precipitous drop as well. Being on the draw makes this a slightly more interesting hand to keep. I mean, one, two, three. Those are pretty decent attackers. White deck. There we go. So here I'm still going to play the Lightfoot Rogue. I guess they could deal 5 to an attacker, some sort of instant. So this one, it always gains death touch no matter what you roll. Um, half the time it'll get plus 1, plus 0, and then 1 out of 20 times you'll get plus 3, plus 0 in first strike. Divine Smite, nice. Very nice. There's probably a chance you should be main decking that. I could also not be playing black, and this card would be really bad, so I don't think you're supposed to do that. This is going to gain 2 life. Okay, that's actually really annoying. Opponent's 
lining up against me pretty well here. I will not jam my 1-1 one, one into your 1-3, though. They didn't play a land last turn, notably. And I'm going to attack with this Death Touch creature. That ventures if it hits. They might have a way to kill it. And that'd be perfectly fine. They do. <laughs> Alright, well, if our opponent's going to have nothing in hand to play, I guess these are these are good cards to have. Um, do I play the... No, nah, I just want to play the old... This thing. Might actually start venturing with it, to be honest. Yeah, I would say these have lined up quite well against... Uh, what I'm doing, considering everything. Precipitous drop on that's a nice one, though. Just a clean drop on the Celestial Unicorn. That'll be a nice one to pick up as well at some point. And I think we're just going to continue to go for the, the Tomb of Annihilation here. We don't venture quite enough to get through the other ones, I don't think. Did I click the wrong thing? No, that happened. All right. Uh, are we mono white or are we missing a color? I'm not sure. Yeah, one three can come in. That's fine. I can attack Shamble and Gas into the half health monk. Could also just play this, which is going to be significantly better. And yeah, we'll just do that. No reason not to attack. All right, the monk's gonna be a little annoying here. I wonder if they're mono white. We have had a player post a mono green deck in uh, our Discord server that they seven two'd with. Ooh, that's really good. Jerk. The Skullport Merchant is also very good. Um. Plus five. I could start venture in here is the thing. Like, yeah, I could get in a point of damage. It's probably better to play my creatures out. I'm going to try to get them here. If they double block the paladin. They did not. Opponent is smart. You just gotta test them sometimes, you know? You just gotta test them. Alright. Now they've got their topper. Tapper active. They've got a 3-6 that attacks and plays defense. Priest of Ancient Lore is an excellent card. Still, still feel pretty good. I've got some value going here. I can Skullport Merchant to sacrifice my Shamble and Gas, kill off the Priest. I'm not going to block this. Potion of healing's fine. Uh, that's a good draw, I would say. It lets me get in a decent chunk of damage here. Just play that. Start getting another flyer on board. Attack for five this turn. Pretty big chunk there. Still have a Skullport Merchant activation up here. Celestial Unicorn, which can grow with the Potion of Healing. This is one white mana sack and gain three life at this point. And we have another Priest, which is going to grow the Celestial Unicorn. All right, they're drawing cards. They're getting things going. I do have Flyers, though, and they do not. So that's a kind of a big difference, I think. Oyster Gargoyle is a nice one. <laughs> I could Oubliette and just make the 4-4 Death Touch. It doesn't seem necessary. Um, well, we're going to go ahead and jam with these three. I'll trade this for a Priest. I guess I don't actually want to do that. I would prefer to sack this to the Skullport Merchant, right? Yeah, I think that's right. We'll play Cloister Gargoyle. I'll go ahead and lose two life here. Opponent will probably also lose two life. 
They could discard a card as well. If they have like a seventh plane in hand, they discarded Blink Dog to save two life. It's fine by me. Ooh, Cleric Class was kind of the card I was worried about. I assume that's a reason. They're going to level that up. And then every time they gain life, they're going to gain one additional life. And then every time they gain life, they're going to put a plus one, plus one counter on stuff. They still need to top deck here. I mean, they're at a virtual 13 with the potion. And they can put a counter on something, hence the attack here. I don't think I'm getting there on the ground anyway. So this goes up to 6. Or this goes up to 4. I kind of want to kill this, right? 7. And I don't think my ground creatures matter too much. So I could do something like this. Just take this hit. And they're going to gain four, put a counter on this. But then they can't start tapping my creatures. I think it's important to get that thing off board. Oh, I can also just block here, right? And sacrifice the skeleton to give this minus one, minus one. So I basically trade these two for the, the three, six. And that happens. Let's see where they put the counter, presumably on the half elf monk. And that gets a counter. And then we skull port this thing and shrink the half elf, half elf monk back down. I don't even lose my 4-4 here. Yeah, I don't think that was a favorable trade for them. And now we can actually probably just start jamming things. Let's kill one of these. That ventures. I will decline. can actually give up a point of damage to make a 4-4 death touch here. That seems <laughs> pretty good. Uh, this is going to attack. This is going to attack. This is going to attack. And... Oh, this is sorcery only. I should have done it before combat so I could attack with this gargoyle. I'm not afraid of dying to this, I don't think. It's just jam. Yep, that makes sense to me. And then let's activate this, tap this, complete the dungeon, make a 4-4, four, four. and also my Cloyster Gargoyle is now a 3-4. Four. 4-4 four, four Death Touch. I'll just trade that for the Unicorn if they want to attack. I feel like I'm probably in pretty good shape here. This one came together. Our opponent stumbled on mana a little bit. They had nice answers at the beginning. And they get to reanimate a creature here, gain life equal to its toughness, plus one because of the first mode. And they get to put a plus one, plus one counter on something as well. <clears throat> That's pretty strong. All right, so they're going to gain five, and they're going to put a plus one counter on something. Paladin class. Okay. Um, well, let's see if my class is better than yours. And we can't quite go up to level 5, but all my creatures are plus 1, plus 1 now. So that's 7, 8, 9. Force a block here. Just keep it on defense is fine. Alright, you're up opponent. I feel fairly safe. The Atropole? It's a legendary. Legendary God Horror. Okay. So they're going to attack and tap my 5-5? Five five. Okay. Okay. 
I mean, I'll make them do whatever they've got here. All right. We got there against mono white. Interesting to see mono colored decks. I have played against a mono black deck as well, but uh, I'll take my win there. That was a little bit of a back and forth. They got me at the beginning pretty good with some of those cards. Um, we had a pretty good start. They had a pretty good start as well, but they stumbled on mana. You, you saw the game. You were watching. Um, that being said, two and one. We were trying to win at least two more to kind of net our gems back here, and uh, hopefully more than that. So match number four will be coming up next. See you there. All right, welcome back. Uh, planes on turn two would be nice. I'm going to keep this hand. Drawing a planes would obviously make this a pretty good hand, I think. Um, as it sits, turn three, Skullport Merchant's a pretty good blocker, so we'll try it out on the draw here. We're against Dream Siphon. Ah, that's a good draw. I mean, if I'm not going to draw a white source to be able to cast my spells, or a, I'd rather draw a two drop that affects the board in some way. Null Hunter, 2-2, two, two, gets a... Plus one counter whenever you get the pack tactics going. I'll just block it if they attack here. Hopefully, don't get a counter on this. Although, Mana Core can help take out a big creature if things happen. Green, white. Green, white. Pack Tactics has, has seemed more achievable than I would have guessed initially. If they use a combat trick, I'm okay with that. Okay. And that is fine, I think. Alright, well, we haven't drawn particularly well. We've drawn a bunch of white cards and a four drop. Uh, yeah, we do get a treasure, though. That's relevant. I would prefer not to use that treasure, of course. I'll block here again if they attack. Okay, I guess that's fine as well. 2-2 two, two Death Toucher, perfectly okay here. I don't want to use this treasure if I can avoid it. Which I can, so we'll just sit tight. 2-2 Death Touch seems pretty good against uh, whatever Green White's trying to do here. Green White's probably just going to be playing Creatures. And uh, you know what's good against Creatures? Death Touch. Ooh, that's nice. So, basically just a, a punch. It was not a blue creature, I believe, is the, the stipulation there. Gain a life, that's fine. Only taking two here. Okay, Swamp is okay. That means that my Manticore might actually get something here. Ooh. Oh, they don't have enough to give that haste, so the pack tactics isn't gonna get me. This is two mana to give plus two, plus two in haste. All right, you can gain your life, you gain two. I'm gonna go ahead and block the Null Hunter and then kill it off. I don't really care about the life gaining at the moment. It's a nice clean two for one with the Mana Core. I just don't want that to get out of hand. Yeah, they can start pumping this thing though. And it looks like here I might have to use the treasure. Activate only once each turn, so. That's attacking as a 4-4. I suppose I could Fate Reversal this and just get a 2-1 back. It's not really that good. It does let me scry because of the uh, venture. Nothing I would play here is even that good against the Dire Wolf. Mm. This isn't great. Yeah, this is a uh, <laughs> this is not fantastic. Might get the death toucher back. And I think here we're gonna have to go for something else. We're probably gonna go for this one. The scry seems very relevant. I'll put a swamp on the bottom. 
And now the question is, do I just play this and sacrifice my potential white source? I think so. I don't love it, but it feels like what we might have to do. Uh, am I chump blocking with mana core? I don't think so. Let's get that two damage in. Okay, that's a 4-1. That also makes a 2-2. Two -two. does mean their attacks are a lot worse this turn, though. All right, we got a planes. We got a planes, everybody. We got a planes. Question is, what are we going to do with the planes? I attack with the 2-2. Two -two. That's a 4-1 reach. I could give this thing flying and jam with it. And then they trade their 4-1 for my 2-2. Two -two. Man, I've got pretty decent blockers, I think. Could also try to build out the board and make use of the paladin class. Can make a goblin token here. Or a treasure token. By playing the Cloister Gargoyle. Put a 1-1 one, one counter. Each opponent loses life. Target creature gets minus 4, minus 1. Hmm. Might be better to play the Cloister Gargoyle. I feel like if I play the Arborea Pegasus, give this flying and attack with it, they're going to trade the 4-1 for it. And that's probably okay. Do need to draw some precipitous drops. This is a good matchup for those. All right, gargoyle it is. Let's uh, just make a goblin, perhaps. Create a treasure token. Seems like it could be better, though. Actually, I'll make a goblin. A goblin can be sacrificed to... Uh, I'm going to leave Manicore on defense here. That goblin can be sacrificed to the Skullport Merchant here. It also just blocks a 4-1. This doesn't have Trample or anything. So here, I wouldn't be able to use the Fungi Cavern. 2-2 two -two Lifelink doesn't change the game too much here. Dragon's Disciple, just a 1-3. Dragons you control have Ward. Gotta check this set. Some things, <laughs> some things are dragons that don't look like dragons. I am going to sacrifice this goblin try and hit more planes that's a fine draw Ooh, rally maneuver is a good one don't think we're quite ready to play it let's go devoted paladin here and i'll attack with mana core i could actually freely attack with cloister gargoyle as well this puts a pretty good body on board so attack with a one five and three two they want to trade the four one for the three two i think i'm happy with that Okay, that's nice. So that sets up the Arborea Pegasus. I guess there might be something for a green mana that I'm blanking on. Oh, this does not have flying. <laughs> this thing does not have flying. What in the world? Oh, it gains flying. Okay, well that was just bad. See, this is why we play though, to read our cards. Um, this thing gains flying when you complete a dungeon. I just assumed it was a 1-4 flyer, which would be really good. Oh, Hand of Vecna is strong. Right now, it's actually not that good. It's only given plus 1, plus 1. On combat, it gives the equipped creature plus 1, plus 1 for each card in your hand. Which here isn't gonna give them a good attack. I mean, I just threw away a creature, though. An opponent definitely caught it. So they're gonna start stockpiling cards in their hand, too. They did get rid of the Reach creature, so I do get to go Pegasus into attack with one T. Would be really nice to draw an additional planes, though. I'm going to get this attack in here. Go for it. Uh, each opponent loses life and gain life, put a plus one counter on target creature. We're going to go and put a plus one counter on, I guess, the paladin, so this can't just attack into it. Maybe that's wrong. Since the paladin's the creature they would want to kill anyway, but that means this attacking as a 4-4 four, four doesn't quite get through. Same with the dire wolf. Rally Maneuver feels like a card that can definitely swing this game in my favor. Plus two plus oh and first strike on something. This should be able to net a two for one, I think. 
Okay, that was actually smart to move that over there. So this can attack as a 6-6. Six, six. I could just put both of these in front of it. They kill my Pegasus. Or they kill my Paladin. And they have to use their turn to pump it. I'll double block. I'm definitely playing into like a potential combat trick as well, but I think they're just going to activate the Prowler here. Hand of Vecna is going to be a problem. Okay, Nether Plains is fantastic. So, I attack here. No, I can get first strike. I can definitely get there on the first strike. So I think I'm going to go Paladin class plus Skullport Merchant and hold up Rally Maneuver, right? I have six mana. That's seven to do that. Hand of Vecna is going to give quite a bit here. Maybe I can get them to throw away a creature, though. Because they know I have this Death Toucher, right? They might put the Hand of Vecna on their worst creature, like the 1-3 or something, and just jam it, knowing that I would have to trade the Huan T Fang Blade. Half-Elf Monk. Okay. Oh, and they played a land, so that makes the hand a little bit worse. Granted, they have something to use their mana on, but... Okay, this is what we want, right? Okay. I think I will be playing lands out here. So we're going to go... Activate... And attack with my one T. They have to put two creatures in front to kill it, which is nice because I'm going to get them with the rally maneuver, I think. And then I can put the lifelink on the Pegasus. I'm going to take a pretty big hit the following turn. I guess they could also just chump block the Fang Blade, but I don't think they want to do that. Okay, they are just going to take the hit, which is nice. I guess I also accept that. I will draw a card. And I have completed a dungeon. Unfortunately, I've also thrown away... Um, I have thrown away my Cloister Gargoyle, which would be excellent to have right now. <laughs> Here we are. So this attacks as a 4-4. This can also attack and start locking some creatures down. That's fine. Right now, the Hand of Vecna will give plus two, plus two. Okay, it will give plus one, plus one. Okay. <clears throat> that seems a little odd to me, because you no longer have the mana to give this haste. You also don't have the mana to tap a creature now. That's strange. Well, I think they're just dead now, right? I guess they have the life linker. We're definitely going to do this. So whenever you attack until end of turn, target attacking creature gets plus one plus one for each other attacking creature and gains double strike. So if I attack with everything, I can give this plus four plus four and double strike. And then whatever this blocks, I have enough mana to give it first strike and just make sure this doesn't get there. I can also just Delver's Torch. Is there anything for one green I should be watching out for? Can't 
can't imagine they have anything here. Plus, they have to block the rest of the stuff, too. So this should be an 8 power. Yeah, it doesn't even matter with the first strike now. This is just coming in for 16 in the air, even through lifelink. And that makes everything else lethal, too. Unless there's something for a green mana that I'm just unaware of. Okay, then. I think our opponent might have misplayed on that last turn. I mean, they probably almost certainly want to keep that tap ability up. But we'll take it. That puts us at 3 and 1, despite our misplay of just throwing away a gargoyle. Not happy about that, but uh, hey, got to take our lumps. We got to learn things. All right, one more win, and I'll be happy. We're at 3 and 1. Deck's performing perfectly fine. We'll jump into match number 5 here, and I'll see you there. We're back against Metallics87. We've got a fine hand, one drop, two drop, and a removal spell. And against a red deck. I don't think we've played against a red deck yet, have we? Red green, that's the pack tactics deck. Nice to get a clean attack in here. Oh, things are a little buggy. Let's see if they have a removal spell. They've got something they can cast at instant speed. It looks like they've got a burn in hands. Dragon's Fire. Three damage, two mana. Can't go wrong. Ooh, that's a good one. Probably just going to turn that into a treasure. Oh, also probably want to get value off of this, though. Deals damage to any target equal to the number of goblins that enter the battlefield. Well, that's it's probably going to get me, right? Um, I can also hold off for a turn and just get rid of this. Other goblins get plus one, plus one. Hmm. Well, I guess I played the land, so we're definitely doing this now. Not happy about that, because it's just very likely they can untap and play an even bigger creature. Sure, if this makes a treasure or destroys an artifact, that's fine. I'm still going to get value off my Warhound, though, which I'm happy about. Um, trade in one damage for two damage here. Not in love with it. So we'll just play Warhound and pass. Put that on the battlefield tapped. I'm going to hold on to Fate's Reversal here. A lot of mana. Earth Cult Elemental. That's going to be a tough one. <laughs> they rolled a 20. So I sacrifice two permanents. Uh, sacrifice two lands here. Not in love with it, but what are you gonna do? Huh. Okay. We'll kill that, I think. Yeah, we rolled the twenty. That that's fine. <laughs> it's a it that's acceptable. Um. Really wish I had a death toucher here. So I think I need to cast this just to kind of keep on board here the lifelinker we'll take the lifelinker and we're gonna scry i think this is the one we want to go for here uh precipitous drop to shrink that thing and to also make a one one chump walker i think that's probably better than just a potential dead draw I will not block. Opponent's playing very fast. I can appreciate it. Just slamming things, put things on the table. Make a treasure. Into Ranger's Longbow. That's a pretty good one. Alright, well, I think I'm actually going to Precipitous Drop this now and just attack. Try to race the opponent here. That is the name of the game, and I have the Life Linker. Granted, they're going to have 8 Power Attacker. I get to make a Chump Blocker, though, yeah? And they have something they can do at instant speed. Uh, we're going to make a goblin for sure. Can I high roll the 20 on my light foot rogue? That would be cool. <laughs> okay. I understand. Game. Oh, they have a kill spell of some sort. Burning hands. Okay. They're out of cards. They're hitting me for a lot. They rolled a 20 on the d20. It's all good. They're going to equip and attack for 8. I'm not going to block. 
Oh, I should have blocked. <laughs> Rally maneuver, huh? Just gain some life and deal some damage here. And two. All right, let's just make sure we go full control here with Mr. Dice Rolly. Attack. I'm going to gain at least four life this turn. So they'll need to top deck something to kill me. Let's see what we get. Kind of doesn't matter. 18, plus one, plus oh, and death touch. And here we're going to go plus two, plus oh, and then plus target a creature. Oh, I'm in full control. So the first one's going to get first strike and two extra damage, and then this one's going to get two extra toughness and lifelink. So I'm actually going to gain seven. And put our opponent down to eight. They put us back down to five. Targner. Well, that's annoying. I can't quite attack into that one, can I? Oh, maybe I can. So what's the next mode here? Each opponent loses a life and you gain a life. Plus one, plus O. Oh. I need to be able to block two things. This can probably get away with an attack. And this cannot... I'm going to have to block both of these. Each one loses a life and you gain a life, or put a plus one counter on something. Okay, let's see what happens here. I rolled a two, so it's just a two one death toucher. Okay. Now, suppose I will go to four. You will go to five. The extra life doesn't matter that much, I don't think. Put a plus one counter on the gargoyle. This is a close game considering our opponent just like high rolled us. All right, they're going to look at the top five and get all the creatures. Ooh, I like no attack though. So I think I go attack, attack. They can play this and give haste. That's probably all right. I have to trade off here. Two one death toucher coming in. Oh god. <laughs> oh jeez. <laughs> okay, should I shame concede? I forgot this. Uh, god, I can't believe I did that again. Just completely forgetting that that thing doesn't have flying. My god. <laughs> That's amazing. I don't think that was the right creature to play actually. Uh-huh. Well, we definitely threw it there. And swamps anyway, so we didn't have this one anyway. Um, guess what? Your Cloister Gargoyle does not have flying. <laughs> it doesn't have flying. I, I guess I'm okay with the fact that I would have lost that game regardless, but... Oh, jeez. All right. Um, there was some wild stuff going on that match. That does put us at 2 and 3, so we're out of it. We lose another one, uh, rather 3 and 2. But uh, we'll fight for this uh, 4 and X. And uh, we'll see you all in match number 6 coming up. All right, welcome back, folks. We are against Spring Snow on the draw again with a perfectly reasonable hand that does need to draw a third land. Um, but if it draws a third land, it looks pretty good. doesn't need to draw 4 drops. It's, it's not what I asked for. It's not what I want. Get us a Ranger's Hawk on turn one against some red stuff. And we did draw the third land, which is nice. I can play Paladin's class here. It makes my opponent's spells more expensive. I'm not playing anything else. Should just do this before combat anyway. And that way they had a two mana, like, burning hands or... Oh, okay. Well, I guess opponent got mana screwed. That or Ranger's Hawk is too good. I don't know. <laughs> I'll take it. Um whatever <laughs> sorry opponent i don't know if that's tilt or what but feels like they kept a risky hand didn't get there 
thankfully they didn't know that our hand wasn't that good either. Uh, I'll take my fourth win though. That basically gives us our gems back and uh, we'll just go ahead and call that one a mulligan and jump back in for match number seven and see you there. All right, we're back. Um, that, that one didn't count, obviously. Uh, we'll go ahead and take this hand though. We've got one drop, two drop and then another two drop plus a removal spell. This is the type of hand that can shape up nicely, depending on how our opponent plays. Get some early aggression. Um, I guess we play Dwarf Hold Champion over Lightfoot Rogue. Just the biggest potential to deal damage if our opponent doesn't have a blocker immediately. Uh, I like that decision. We'll go ahead and jam. We'll play a Lightfoot Rogue, and now I'm just off to the races because I can get rid of a blocker here. 4-5. That only untaps if you gain life. Okay. We'll turn it into a treasure that ramps our opponent a little bit, but also gets me in for 6, maybe 7 damage. Maybe 9. Ah, we got there. <laughs> Nice. Hey, it's it's possible. Now all I need is for them to play something that dies to precipitous drop and we're good. That dies to precipitous drop. I do need to roll here. Oh, actually I can make them lose a life so I don't even need the roll. Uh, each player loses a life. <laughs> the die bug. <laughs> the ponder bug, it's here. That's two 20s we've seen. That's two 20s we've seen today. One in my favor. I'll take it. I can never complain about the die roll again. <laughs> that was savage. Um, I guess the name of the game here is make sure you're playing something early. Anyway, we've netted gems at this point, and we'll just keep it rolling until we take another loss or potentially win these last two. So this will be, what, match number eight coming up next. See you there. All right, we're back after some really fast games. Uh, we're on the draw here with a fine hand. This is definitely a keepable hand. We're against Ed the Tinker. Blue? You're allowed to play blue? This thing's so much to equip, unfortunately. Five mana before it gets going, although it is some repeated value. Uh, this isn't relevant until six. Until they get to six mana. Should I just play the Delver's Torch here? I don't necessarily need to play this right away. I'll go ahead and just cast the Delver's Torch and pass. So this is six mana to roll a die, and you either draw a card, or on the top end you get to look at the top three. Opponent wants to trade. I will make a treasure. They're probably going to go ahead and play something that, uh, like the 3-2 that draws a card. Oh, no. They did not. They could also have a counter spell here. I mean, I'm going to play my Death Toucher. If they counter it, that's fine. They did not. So, kill spell? No, nothing? That was a weird trade. I guess they don't want me to use the Delver's Torch is the thing. Ah, okay, so this is whenever you roll a die, you make a 1-1. One, one. Well, we're going to Precipitous drop that and play Paladin class here. I could also just do this and double venture, but I'd rather them not start making tokens. So, we're going to play this first. That way they can't cast a 1-mana spell of some sort. And then we'll go ahead and drop you. That's going to let us get things rolling here. I think we probably want the Tomb of Annihilation, right? Maybe we want the incremental card advantage of the Lost Mine here. And this one actually seems reasonable as well. Need some sort of card advantage, though. This one feels like it's the most card advantage-y. I'm not really pressuring them too much now. I'm going to go ahead and take this one because the card draw seems like it could be relevant. The scry also to the bottom is very nice. And we immediately get a second hit. So let's go ahead and make the goblin here. And now we're going with the Delver's Torch. They could play just a good blocker. Charmed Sleep, this doesn't untap. Okay. I do have those Skullport Merchants, which is going to make this a little better. All right, and Fate's Reversal, the Trickster back. Well, we're going with the Torch here. Could also update the Paladin if we wanted. This card scares me a little bit. I'm, I'm going to be honest. 
Cloister Gargoyle. Well, that just gets us there this turn, doesn't it? If we want to use the treasure. This does not have flying, by the way. I don't know if people know that or not. Put a plus one counter. I suppose I could use the treasure here. Got plenty of mana. The only real reason not to use it is we have the... um. We have the um, Skullport Merchants, but I also have a creature I'm more than happy to sacrifice already. Well, we're going to complete a dungeon already on turn 5. That's going to grow our Cloister Gargoyle. We've got a Death Priest. This is looking pretty good. We've also got Paladin Class just sitting here. Got to imagine this is going to be a problem for us at some point. I'm going to kill my Cloister Gargoyle. Grim Bounty, make a treasure. Okay. Well. Now I want to go Paladin plus activate, right? Yeah. Let's go and do this. This Goblin's getting in there for four. Attack. We're going to go Tomb of Annihilation now. Just try to get in that extra damage. Paladin. And I will play land here. Because I've got plenty to do with my mana. Ericle Elemental bounces a creature that does kill my devil, for what it's worth. Um, here, I just go attack and give this double strike, right? Not quite enough to equip. This is attacking as a... Yeah, this is dead for eight. I will play the land... I will pass the turn. Alright, Paladin is dead into this. So they've got blockers. I'm going to need to draw at least something else here. Not that. And ship. Alright, now if they have a kill spell and a way to deal with this priest, they could definitely turn the corner. Ooh, so they're going to either put a spell back in their hand or they're going to put it on top. Ah, they got to draw it too, so they get the power word kill, this uh, cleric. And yeah, it actually feels like I'm probably going to lose this game now. They have to use the treasure, but no big deal. Take four. All right, Paladin is just as good as any other draw here, I suppose. Pump. We'll play the land. Alright, I feel like I'm going to need one more thing to get in there. Alright, so that just bounces, but I am going to take 2, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Alright. Oh, they... They should not have played that land. Alright, let's get in there and pass the turn. I've drawn nine lands, this is unfortunate. I really only need... Like, they played the land there, I only needed something to, uh... Hmm. Skullport Merchant's good. That's a good draw. So, I guess I attack here first. Yeah, I needed to get in last turn. Let's play Skullport Merchant first. We learned our lesson last time, right? Alright, let's go ahead and attack and make them throw away a blocker here. The 3-4, I imagine, is getting in there. Uh, we'll make them discard that card, or use it. Actually, if they use it, they just die. I will discard a card myself. Oh well, yeah, they couldn't afford to cast that. Yeah. Alright, we got us a chump block. I'm going to go ahead and activate this now, sack the 1T. 
blade blade minimus containment's a nice one should i just use it here Should I just use it on the 2-5 and stop them from being able to run me over? I guess I can hold on to it and just draw another card with the Merchant here. Maybe they attack with all the Flyers and they just leave back one blocker. Something along those lines. Centric Apprentice. So what's their next thing? They're going to make a Chump Walker. Okay. It's a fine draw. Puts some additional blockers on board. They're going to attack for four, I imagine. Yep. Let's sacrifice this. I don't think I have anything for white mana here. Skull for merchant number two. Precipitous drop, so I feel like that gets it done, right? Yeah, we can kill both their blockers, so let's go. let's go ahead and drop them. Ooh, this was a close game. Uh, each player loses two life, and I have to sacrifice a land artifact. We'll just sacrifice lands here. And then we will turn this one into a dude. Attack. Give this thing double strike. Make a 4-4. Four, four. Woo! That's a close one. We completed that dungeon very fast. Um, opponent definitely turned things around there, though. Got that one got my heart racing a little bit. I mean, we get the nail biter match, though, right? No matter what happens, we get one more match, and we might get the full seven wins. We might take a third loss. Whatever happens, happens. Let's go ahead and see what. Uh, let's see what happens. Uh, match number. I don't know what is this eight, nine coming up. The full nine matches. See you there. All right, welcome back. Uh, unfortunately, have to take a mulligan on the play this time. This might be the first mulligan of the day. Oof. Into a not particularly good hand, although this hand could get there if we draw some planes. Hello, my friend. Revolving Wilds. I accept. That is not a planes. We do have a two drop. Next turn is going to be the moment of truth turn. We draw a planes and Cloister Gargoyle can get us a scry. And that's going to be pretty nice. Is it this one? No, this is the one we want to go for here. Especially since that treasure might end up mattering. Red, black. This is a treasure sacrifice deck of sorts. Uh, that was not a good draw. Alright, so 3 1 Death Toucher coming in. Trade is fine, although I have no follow-up, and my hand is all cards I can't cast. So we're going to need to draw something pretty good here. This is uh, not promising, that's for sure. Alright, that's going to make a treasure token. Skullport Merchant. Hey, if I'm not going to draw a land, then I'll take a Skullport Merchant. And that treasure could come in handy here. What's happening? What are we doing? If they attack, um, I guess I just block. Okay, so this thing gets first strike and haste because they used a treasure for it, I believe. That is correct. And it's also just a 4 3. Hmm. I'm going to have to use this in a very unfortunate manner. I think I'm just going to get this Cloister Gargoyle down. Use it to scry. It does not have flying. Scry one. Planes on top is good. And we're not attacking. This plus the, the Rally Maneuver can come in handy for sure. Uh oh, blue mana too. 4-3 attacks, will not block. They add a big creature to the board and probably... Oh, Drider, Jesus. Okay, well that's certainly a big creature. 
I mean, I just have to try and get him with the rally maneuver here, I think. And if they have any sort of interaction, I'm going to lose. But my other option is just, like, tapping out for a 2-2. If they use pre-combat kill spell, oh, God. <laughs> this can make the Drider unblockable. Okay, well, GG us, I suppose. You know what? Six and three ain't bad, though. Six and three ain't bad. So what we want to do here is double block. They have something they can cast for a red mana. Oh, they're ordering blockers. Yeah, this is going to get in every turn and make an additional 2-1 with Menace and Reach. Unless I can kill Crydel. All right. Ooh. Uh, plus two, plus O, first strike here. Plus O, plus two, lifelink here. We're at 8 already. Yeah. GG's opponent. GG's. Manticore is not going to get it done. Um, Delver's Torch can't even activate. This isn't going to be good enough. Hmm. I think this one's over. I could probably concede now, but we'll let our opponent actually kill us. I don't know why I just cast that Manticore. Yeah, we'll give it to him. Got the Drider plus Cradle. Cradle? Is it pronounced Cradle? Oof. Not the uh, way we wanted to go out. So didn't quite get there on seven, but uh, six and three is not bad. And uh, this deck was fun to play. Let's go ahead and look at it one more time and then close out the video. So uh, this I tried to push the, the black-white um, adventure theme. Uh, I'm not entirely sure if it got there or not. I didn't see the gold uncommon, which would have been very nice. Um, it feels like a couple more cheap ways. Like, maybe I wanted another fate reversal of some sort. Maybe I wanted more ways to get this through. Maybe I just wanted to play Drider. Like, Drider might just be better than these two cards. But the deck played out as a nice little aggressive deck. Definitely took advantage of some of the sacrifice synergies and just attacking the opponents who didn't play things early. And we had some close ones and some not so close ones. So this was a fun little uh, experience in learning some of the cards. Things like, uh, I mean, I'm probably not going to forget Cloister Gargoyle again, given that I forgot it twice in this video. <laughs> um, let me know how you would have built this deck, what you would have done differently. Would you play Gloomstalker? Would you splash for Skeletal Swarm in? Is Drider better than the five drops I'm playing, even if they're a little more suited for the deck? Let me know. Uh, what's your experience with Adventures in the Forgotten Realm? Uh, we'll probably check back in towards the end of this format. Remember, this is literally my second or third draft of the format, so I don't quite know everything that's going on, but it was fun to play. This this was enjoyable. The adventuring was fun, and uh, I'm glad we got to complete some dungeons. So hope you had fun watching. My name's Timothy here with Jank Diver Gaming. Remember to subscribe to the channel for more content like this, and uh, find us on Twitter at MTG. Or rather, I'm sorry, that's my old Twitter, at Jank Diver Gaming, capital J, capital D, capital G, and check out our Deep Dive podcast where we just did a set review of uh, all the cube-worthy cards from Adventures in the Forgotten Realm. All right, my name's Timothy. Thanks for joining. I'll catch you all next time.